another electric SUV, Mercedes EQB. But this car is actually a seven-seater. And if you're after an electric seven-seater, well, there's not that much choice. Direct competition will be Tesla Model Y. But that's being practical has to me looking, well, a little bit dull. Without further ado, I say, let's hop in and hope that things will brighten up. One, two, two three. cars are all about environment and all that stuff okay okay but they're very much about acceleration so let's see how quick is the EQB I'm gonna put you into spot modes and I think that's all I can do hmm. oh well. foot on the brake foot on the throttle let's see how quick you are you German Sheila go on uh, so the declared 0 to 100 is 6.2 seconds and I am well well 5.55 not bad at all the top speed is 160 kilometers an hour see i told you electric has a bad acceleration because we like it <laughs> Okay, let's check the trunk, the front trunk. See just how much space we've got in here. Well, well, not much at all. That's because this car is based on an internal combustion model, the GLB. When you're building an electric car from scratch, you will have some spice in the front. But anyway, we've got a 66 kilowatt hour battery that will give us an electric range of 420 kilometers. 260 miles we can charge the battery at home using one of those wall boxes 7.4 kilowatts and it will take us 11 hours to take the battery from flat to full but we've got access to those fast chargers it will take us 35 minutes to take this car from 10 percent to 80 percent 100 kilowatts and this is as fast as it gets because we've got a charging cap now just to give an idea Genesis GV60, for example, will take half of the time because we don't have that 100 kilowatts cap. You got to keep that in mind if you're doing long distances, but if you're just trotting around town, short distances, you'll be good as gold in this car. This is what we waited for. No looking back. We started something I can never let go. So let's begin by flooring this car. <laughs> In a comfort mode, the throttle pedal is a little bit, well, mushy for 292 horses and 520 newton meters of torque. So the way around that I practice is change it to individual modes. The throttle pedal is in sport, but the rest remains in comfort. So let's give it another go. <laughs> Much more pleasant. Oh yeah, no fuffing around instant torque, one-speed automatic gearbox and handling on a twisty road which is actually pretty good. We've got all drive system, we feel solid, we feel planted and we've got plenty of grip. This guy is very comfy, it is relaxing, the suspension is soft so it absorbs pretty much all bumps, potholes and imperfections. Now of course being electric as you trot around town it is very quiet. I'm actually in town using what's so-called the one pedal drive. What this means is that I'm only using the throttle pedal. So I lift my foot off the throttle, the car starts to slow down and it will continue to coast. Brilliant and very convenient in town. And of course, it improves your efficiency. You can adjust the intensity of this recuperation process using the pedal shifters, but I just leave it in automatic and it does the job ever so well but as you pick up a bit of speed of the motorway there's very little tire noise very little wind noise you activate adaptive cruise control lane keeping assist what's bizarre is that these two do not come as standard with eqb mercedes does like to surprise us from time to time actually the eqb is such a delightful cruiser 
except for the rain. Because in town, it's not hard to drive about 400 kilometers, 250 miles. But as soon as you hop on the motorway and drive, well, just normal motorway speed, 120 kilometers an hour, 75 miles per hour, you're looking at half of this figure. So you gotta keep that in mind if you're planning on driving long distances in EQB. What else you gotta keep in mind is the relatively slow charging times. Just to give you an idea, Hyundai Ioniq 5, Kia EV6, Genesis GV60. I mean, these cars charge twice as fast, actually faster than twice as fast. So the South Koreans <laughs> are putting the Germans to shame, with the exception, of course, being uh, Porsche Taycan. But there's some serious work to be done. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, Mercedes. I'm sorry I have to say that. Anyway, on to more positive things. The steering is nice and light, but it's got a good response. It is actually dead easy to drive this car and maneuver this car in and out of car parks. We've got a good turning circle, really nice visibility in the front, big rear window, and of course, the brilliant cameras. <laughs> So the external differences between EQB and GLB are actually piper thin, but one of them is this beautiful taillight. I like it. Let's check the boot space. Electronic operator tailgate? Nope. I got the cheap version, clearly. Anyway, with the current setup, meaning we are using five seats, the boot space is 495 liters. If we decide to use all seven seats, the boot space reduces to 465 liters, which means two people are using 30 liters, which means is it really worth to take two extra people? Probably not. Anyway, the floor here is completely flat, which means you can easily slide items in and take them out. Some more storage space for your cables, and that is enough about the boot space. Being a passenger in EQB, well, I have adjusted the front seat for my height, which is just over 1.7 meters, 5 foot 7. I've got plenty of legroom, a very good headroom. I do like this panoramic sunroof. What about the middle seat? Well, actually, the floor here is nearly flat, so it's okay for an adult. I'm just wondering where the other two seats, I think they've been folded, but anyway, you've got plenty of space here, Alcantara. I like it. Look into my eyes and you will see See the way that you still got a home In my opinion, Mercedes built one of the nicest cabins available on the market and this car is no exception. The quality of the materials, the fit and finish is superb. I do have the AMG package, which is why I've got red stitching, otherwise you will have blue stitching. I also have Alcantara seats. I am a fan of Alcantara, it's so fluffy and pleasant in the winter and also very good in the summer. I do have seat kinetics, which is a gentle massage, but does the job. Let's hop into practicality. Large bottle of water, test. Can you fit that in the dobbin? Yes, you can, easy. You can pop that all in here. Oh no, you can't. Nothing bulky will go without a fight. Moving on. Got plenty of storage space down here. Two USB-C ports, very good glove box, reasonable size, okay. Another USB-C ports. Got wireless mobile charging here. You can close this pocket. So it's nice and tidy and hides all your secrets. I do like the steering wheel, AMG. I just think it's package is worth the money. Paddle shift is not to change your gears because we only have one gear, but to adjust the recuperation process, the intensity, I'll just leave it at autumn. Now the shocker buttons, it does appear to be a bit of a mumbo jumbo to start with, but trust me, this is a German car. It has to make sense. Everything does make sense. So left side operates the digital driver's display. The right side operates this part of this beautiful screen. Now this is the MBUX system and together with iDrive and BMW, are by far the best infotainment systems available on the market. Now you can operate a system using your finger, it's a touch screen, or you can use the touch pad down here. You also have the wrist support. I mean, it's a Mercedes, right? I tend to use the, the pad because it's far less distracting when you're driving. You also have the shortcut buttons down here. You can change your driving mode, 
You can also adjust the volume, traditional note, knob, no mambo jumbo. Let's have a look at the screen. The system itself is easy, straightforward, extremely intuitive. Let's have a look at the graphics. Crisp, crystal clear. Look how quickly the system responds to my fingers. You can, of course, plug in your iPhone or your Android, but really, why would you? And it's a such a beautiful system. But speaking of using other things, other apps. Now, I do recommend using the Mercedes apps because, for example, what this app allows you to do is, for example, it's winter time and you are charging your car outside. You can preheat this car. But the thing is that actually the heating doesn't suck your battery. It sucks the power from the wall socket, from the charger. Very, very clever. What else, by the way, is worth using is when you are driving on a longer distance journey is to use the navigation here because it will show you which charging stations are nearby and how much battery percentage will you have left upon arriving at this charging station. So you don't want to get yourself into trouble, do you? So use that. Okay, what else I can tell you about the cabin? I like the panoramic sunroof. Home sweet home. Oh, ambient lighting. I love that. Perfect for grey weather. Perfect for this kind of a car. I mean, it makes makes it a little bit better. Yep. Lost in your eyes. I go back inside my head. Falling to so the EQB starts from 55,000 pounds in the UK and $58,000 in USA. I do have the AMG package, so a couple thousand more. Now, for an electric SUV with seven seats, you can configure it with five. It's actually not a bad looking car. It is classy, it is traditional, but my goodness gracious me, this color. I mean, whoever was specking this car, don't you have any joy in life? Don't you have any emotions? What is the matter with you? This color is just so boring. I mean, go for the denim blue, even white. Any color will look better than this mousy shade of, I don't know what it is. I'll go for the rose gold. Now that is bombastic. So you see, the EQB is not a car for everybody. It's a car for somebody who's got a big family, needs lots of spice, practicality, is looking for a premium ride great infotainment system, beautiful interior, but somebody who doesn't drive long distances. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful day, whatever that you're up to, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.